This episode of Around the Oval is brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Hey, Ohio State fans, Alex Gleitman here back with another edition of Around the Oval brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. Uh, today's podcast, we got a special guest with us. He's down in San Antonio right now, which is at the coaches convention, uh, this past weekend, army all or not army, just the all American bowl, uh, w- was down there as well. One of his, uh, guys was supposed to play in the game. Couldn't due to, uh, safety protocols, health and safety protocols. But, uh, we got with us today, Brandon Collier, founder of PPI, recruits uh the group that trains and mentors hero canoe the latest ohio state buckeye brandon thanks for joining the show appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us yeah thanks for having me man i'm, I'm excited excited to um i mean you guys welcome me so thank you absolutely and you know uh it, it's been pretty impressive what you've been able to do i think a lot of people who follow recruiting especially ohio state recruiting know about you and know about ppi recruits but why don't you give us a little bit of, about your background how you got started doing this and and your journey a little bit yeah for sure um i'm from cleveland ohio born and raised um so i did grow up a buckeye fan i was really a diehard buckeye fan until i started doing what i'm doing now you know i mean now it's you know what I mean? It's a little different now. Now you're yeah. for your guys, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I got guys at the team up north, Michigan, however y'all want to say it, you know what I mean, that I root for as well. So, but yeah, um, I, I went to a public school on the west side of Cleveland called Lincoln West High School. It's a very small school that don't get recruited at all. Then I end up going to um, a prep school in Hudson called Western Reserve Academy, another small school, not really – too many college coaches coming in. So I had to do a lot of my recruitment on my own, whether it's sending out tapes, calling coaches on my own. So I kind of felt it got a love for just that um, process of it. Um, and, and that's something that kind of carried me to where I'm at today. I went on to get a full scholarship to play for UMass football um, under Don Brown, played there for four or five years, then had a small stint in the NFL with the Eagles, got hurt there played a year and a half in Canada with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Then from there, I wanted to continue playing. I got released there. And I heard a friend that was playing in France that that told me about some European leagues. And then I went to Austria to play. Uh, it's got my first stint. Then I went to another, another team in Austria that ended up landing in Germany in, I believe it was 2014. Yeah, I believe it was 2014, 2013. I ended up in Germany and to play. So I played three years in Germany and Austria um, collectively, and I had got my final injury, which is ACL. And I said, okay, my career is done. I'm almost 30 years old. I'm 30 years old, and um, let me see what's next. So, But over the time I was playing, I had seen a lot of young talent that I was playing against where I was 29, 30, when it was finding out someone was 16, 17 years old, and it was really good. So they was asking me, can I help them and things, but I was more focused on my career of playing. But when I finished, I'm like, oh, I see another lane that's untapped and nobody has done before. And of course, I want to, you know I mean, be, around, be in Europe, be around a game and grow football. So that's kind of how, how it all started and kind of been very successful from there. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and so, you know, you, you decided to, to kind of make a career now out of working with kids from Europe mm-hmm. who grow up where American football isn't really the first sport. It's usually soccer or basketball right. or cricket, even um, right. who knows, you know, and, and so what have you, how have you, how are these kids finding you? I mean, how have you been able to kind of take their skill sets and help, you know, extrapolate that to, to, you know, become, I mean, some of these guys are big time college football players going to go on to the NFL and things like that. How have you been able to do that? Yeah, I mean, so uh, when I first started, I mean, I found a couple kids. It was very slow. So I was just training kids and things like that, trying to and developing them and things like that. So once I got the first kid, sent him to, brought him to America, he stood out. Then more and more kids started seeing what I was doing. So he was kind of one of the first ones that, most guys, if they're interested in college, they have to go to high school route. So these guys was coming to going to college directly from Europe through the high, through the club system. So I was kind of one of the first people that ever did that, especially at this level um, that we're doing it at now. And so what I do is have camps all through Europe, even Australia I'm working at as well. So I had camps all these places. So I find the best kids at these camps. 
start mentoring them, developing them, coaching them, just teaching about football in the whole. Um, and cause like I said, like you said, most of them played um, soccer growing up. So they all pretty athletic that outgrew the sport and things like that. So when I find a kid out here, if he told me he played football at five, six years old, um, I don't think he's going to be as talented as the guy that plays soccer that's 14, 15, that's outgrew it, that's athletic and bend and things like that. So I'm more excited for the guys that started football late than the guys that play early. So like I said, I have these um, camps, find them, develop them. You know I mean, work with some of their coaches um, from, from the leagues just to see, see what these guys, what pushes these guys. Then close to the summer, I bring them what we call a Dream Chasers Tour which was our first tour in 2017. Um, so we didn't, this would be our fifth tour coming up this summer. So that's kind of how we do it. And, and just the relationships and the trust that I have gained with all the coaches over the years have made it very successful. Yeah. And, you know, you guys usually make a stop at Ohio state, which you did this past year and you bring all your guys and they work out and a lot of them land offers at these camps. So it's, it's a, it's a great opportunity and a great thing that you do for them. Um, Thank you. Yeah, and, you know, obviously we'd love to have you on any time, but timely reason we, we have you on uh, one of your guys, Hero Canoe, defensive tackle, plays out in Santa Margarita in California, but uh, originally from Germany. Um, you know, he, he just committed to Ohio State. He signed with Ohio State, kind of kept that under wraps and announced at the mm-hmm. All-American Bowl. But mm-hmm. um, tell us a little bit about how you found, how you found Hero and, and when you started working with him and, and, and just that process. Yeah, it was uh, another kid from Hero's hometown that I was working with, a kid, a guy named Philip Akonko, another half German, half Nigerian kid that he's the one that kind of got Hero into football. He seen him um, doing some – he was throwing the football in the field, and it's it's a very small village in the Bavaria, Germany. And he wrote me, said, man, I see, I see this big kid. He, uh, He was 14 years old at the time. I see this big kid. He plays soccer. Um, I think he could play football because he's a big, strong looking kid. So um, Hero actually reached out to me through him. And literally a week later, I took a train down there and to work with him. And when I mean, he at the time, he was probably 6'3", 245, 250. And I was thought he might have been a middle linebacker at the time. So um, we started doing like agility drills. I mean, I mean, he just stood out and. He learned really quick. Then we got into some bag drills. He was very powerful. So I'm like, man, over, over the, if I can work with this kid over a couple of weeks, a couple of months, man, he can be something. So I think I seen him again two months later. He was 6'4". He grew, grew an inch and was probably 270 at the time within a, within a one or two month span. And I mean, I guess I knew right away that that kid will be something. So over the next, I would say six months, I just started Every couple of weeks working with them, developing them, mentoring them, what football was, watching film with them. And just over time, he just got he started translating pretty easy, got better and better. And it came, I would say, July of July of 20, what were we in 2020? So July of 2020, um, I reached out to a good friend of mine that, or my roommate from college, Anthony Rousier, which was at Santa Margarita High School. So I say, man, I I need to get this kid to play against some competition because I think he could be the one that can kind of show all the coaches that, then these kids can really play. I mean, we, we didn't place kids at Michigan, Penn State, Notre Dame, even before him. So coaches knew who we were, but none of these kids play high school football. And it's always a question, you know, what the competition like. So, I wanted to send him to the best league in high school football. So I sent him to the training league in California. And I mean, he, he went there and I mean, literally after the first game, he had, I think 12 scholarship offers. So, I mean, it just kind of shows you, I mean, he he learned quick, developed quick and just, um, I mean, he's an, he's an awesome kid. So like I said, I think just him going to Ohio state is kind of like the staple of what we've been doing and shows, um, where we at today, I mean, is Ohio State one of the pinnacle programs out there? And I think that his relationship with Coach Johnson, Coach Day, Coach Mick, I mean, I mean, really my relationship with them stayed back from 2017 when I first came. You know I mean, we, like I always um, told Coach Jay, one day we're going to have one that you want. I mean, because it was always a lot of guys that were really close. 
probably should have been playing at Ohio State, but you know, I mean, it, it takes a lot to play at Ohio State, so that's kind of what happened. And um, like I said, over the time, and he fell in love with Ohio State as well, so it kind of worked out. I mean, of course, I never pressured him that I'm from Ohio to play for Ohio State, but he's just, I mean, grew his own natural connection with him, and he chose him. Yeah, we had a feeling. Uh, I guess it was you guys went up. I think you guys were at Ohio State and then went up to Michigan, I think. And he hung back to work an extra day with Coach Jay. And we kind of knew then. We're like, okay, this this yeah. feels like something. There's a special connection there. And, and it, yeah. it's, it, mm-hmm. it seemed that that's, that, that kind of – you know, that those like two, two or three days he was down there at Ohio State or and then I think he came back later in the summer with you guys. I, I think that that probably kind of cemented and then the official visit probably was the cherry on top. Is that yeah, accurate? Yeah, I, I would say I me. Mean, I would say a little bit for me being from Ohio kind of was the reason we was at Ohio State. Just, right. you know what I mean? So me being from there and, and like I said, I can come home and see my family. So that's kind of. <laughs> one of the reasons we always go to Ohio State on the tours, and I mean, of course, it's one of the best programs right. in the country. But like I said, I didn't want to be a guy that said, "Okay, hero man, you you need to go to Ohio State." So me and him really never talked to Ohio State in terms of him going. He just connected with Coach Jay so well that um, when we got there, it's kind of like a father son right away. And you know, I mean, he because uh, we had the tight end, he got the scholarship, so the tight end, Coach Ryan, Coach Day asked him, "Can he stay?" one more day since he's not playing high school football in America, it's just to grow a relationship with him. And Hero just out of himself said, man, I'd love to stay another day and work with Coach Jay again just to learn from him. So, I mean, just to get that teaching, two days of teaching, I mean, like I said, you can go somewhere and work for months and months and won't get the same coaching that you can get in two days from a coach like Larry Johnson. So I just think that 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 definitely kind of sold it in – um and of course, you mean just the just the Ohio State brand kind of carries itself on its own. Of course, and you know it's a that's a position of need for them. They need defensive tackles. They're losing mm-hmm. Haskell Garrett, and you know he's going to have an opportunity to come in and play. And I, I think mm-hmm. you know what you mentioned before about he's really new to football. I mean, he's a soccer player, which is crazy mm-hmm. to think about him, a guy his size, want right. uh, at some point being a, a soccer player. But it's good to have that athleticism and that agility playing defensive line. So. It's exciting, I think, for for fans and for Ohio State that he's really just scratching the surface of his potential, and he's only going to get that much better. But why don't you tell us, as someone who works with him constantly, what is Ohio State getting in in Hero as a player? Yeah, I mean, they're getting a kid that just recently turned seventeen a couple months ago, so he'll be, I mean, he'll be playing his first game um, at seventeen years old. So just something like that, like he's he's he's, he's young for his grade. He's I mean, he's legit six foot five, 290 pounds and haven't been in the college rape room, haven't ate the proper meals and foods. So, I mean, I could just imagine when a nutrition and coach Mick get with him and what type of I mean, I'm sure the guy be 305 pounds and, and, and looking like he's probably 280. And I mean, they getting a guy that I mean, loves football, a guy that, of course, we can always we're gonna always throw around a where raw, raw, raw because he only played a few years of football. But I just think that he's already played in the highest level of high school football. So going to college, he's gonna already be like, okay, I seen guys that was really good in high school. Of course, it's not college, but he's seen some talent and played against competition. And they're gonna get a guy that's, I think, man. I'll be surprised if he's here after three years if it be just was the type of potential in that he got. You know what I mean? Year one, like I said, like you said, Ohio State need D tackle. So I expect him to play year one somewhat. But year two, year three is where I could see him just being, I mean, a guy that the Big Ten, like the Big Ten got to be worried about. Yeah, those are going to be the money years. You, you know, it's even even Nick and Joey Bosa didn't start their freshman year, but right. they were in they were in that rotation. Then year two, they made the jump, and then year three, you saw right. what right. they were. So right. that would be a nice path for him to go on for sure. Yeah, that's that's what I see, and I mean, I can see. I don't. See, he's not going to be a guy that you just plug in the middle and stop the run. He's going. I think he's going to be a three down player that got size in the middle. And you know I mean, I just. I, I, like I said, I just think he can be really special for Ohio State. Yeah, let me ask you, though, 
I mean, he's obviously got a lot of strengths as a player, but where do you see the biggest jump that he needs to make in order to become that player in his game? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you need to understand pass rush, learn how to properly pass rush. You know what I mean? He get away with his size and strength and athletic ability, but just understanding when to use his hand, how to use his hands, and just um, because he got very good hips and change of direction. But once he know how to use his hands and how to read when you do this move and do, do, do that move, then I think man, it's going to be really tough for – um, o line to stop him because he's just as big as them and but way more athletic yeah and and you know off the field it's not really an area you know he's not a big talker with the media and stuff right. like that but like so we didn't really get to know him all that well um he seems like a great kid but tell us a little bit about him as a person off the field yeah i mean uh, like i said I'm, I'm surprised he didn't talk more to you guys because he's a very he actually is a very social guy i mean maybe he needs to feel more comfortable but he's uh, he's well maybe because of me because I told him to be careful with the media and stuff. <laughs> so it could be because of me he probably listened to that and took it the way of okay I I shouldn't talk to anybody. But he's actually a really social guy and 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 as y'all to see moving forward, man, he just got a big smile and he's one of them kids that you like that you know he's a great kid. I mean when you look at him and talk to him, you're gonna. Like everybody gonna say that that's a really great kid, and, and I mean I think that he's gonna fit the culture there, and he's gonna be one kid that I think the media just with his name alone, hero is gonna. I mean, <laughs> it's gonna grab it. The media is gonna really gravitate towards him. Oh yeah, there's gonna be a lot of fun with with headlines with him and stuff mm -hmm. like that, especially if he's the, he's the guy we think he's gonna be. So right. when does he when does he get to Ohio State? Is he enrolling early or is he gonna yeah. have to come in the summer? Yeah, unfortunately, he do. I mean, just the strenuous of the Catholic school he went to, and in, in the the in in sorry in California that he's not he wasn't able to get all his classes finished on time. So he's he's going to be there after graduation at the end of May. So of course, it'd have been better for him to go early. But you know, what I mean, I think he'll be fine getting there in May. Yeah, now that he's signed, you know, he could get his hands on the playbook a little bit, yeah. do some. Do some uh, Zoom work with Coach Johnson right. and maybe, you know, get some drills to do and things like that. Coach Mick, give him a plan. Yeah, they, Start sent eating right. book, they sent him a book already. So, yeah, he didn't have a go. book since, since December 20th December. around yeah. that time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, and, you know, before we let you go, uh, you know, as you said, you, you guys have had a number of, of big time players that you've sent all over the country. Um, Ohio State's offered a few of them. Obviously, Hero is one that they got. But. Who are mm -hmm. some guys that you got now that you're going to bring around next summer um, mm -hmm. that we, sh you know, Ohio State fans need to keep an eye on that, that maybe you think can play at that level? Yeah, I mean, two guys that came to camp last year that 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 sparked. I mean, Thomas Collins, I mean, honestly, I think he's just as good as Hero in terms of potential and pr production. You know what I mean? Like, Hero got more of the in the field size, but man, when I look at Geno Atkins, Aaron Donalds, and these Grady Jarrett's of the world, I mean, some of the best D tackles are six one. So I think, man, that kid for sure will be he's gonna be a star wherever he's go. But I think Ohio State definitely should keep an eye on him and they will. I mean, of course, and another guy, Lucas Simmons, another kid that that's down in Florida playing his last year high school football, six seven, three oh five. I think um with a huge summer and a huge start of next year, I think Ohio State will offer him. Um, I, like I said, I talked to Coach Day yesterday at the convention about them guys, and um, just um, I, I, mean, I know they definitely very interested in in the couple guys, sleeper guys that 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 many people don't know about is um, got a linebacker named Kofi Taylor Barrett. I mean, he was actually at, he got an offer from Michigan State this summer. And I think he's a kid. I mean, Ohio State got some great linebackers, but I think he'll fit their room. And I think definitely he'll be a kid Ohio State will offer this summer. Um, also, um, let me think. Mm, yeah, I got a, a receiver, actually. I mean, I was talking to Coach Hartline. It's crazy. I know Ohio State don't need any more receivers, but we talked about a receiver I got out of France that's, I mean, he's a 4'3 kid. That's, that's a special talent. Um Named Roger. Um, I don't even want to butcher his last name. We call him we call him Cheetah because he um 
remind us of um Tyreek Tyreek Hill from um from the Kansas City Chiefs. So yeah, I, I would say them guys. Then we got another another guy named um hold on, I want to get one more guy in there. But I mean, I got a lot of guys, but there are a few guys that I wanted to, um that that definitely will stand out, but as many that I'm missing getting the brain freeze right now. But um there were some guys that I bring this summer that I'm sure the Buckeye staff will be high on. Yeah, well, uh, we'll we're, we're excited to see you out there again in Columbus. We'll definitely make sure to keep a close eye on your guys, and we'll be in touch as we get closer to that date. So you could, you could yes. give us a list, and we'll make sure uh, we'll make sure our fans keep an eye out on them too. But uh, Brandon, thanks yes. thanks for joining the show. Really appreciate it. We we appreciate everything you do for these kids, and you. Um, you know, Buckeye Nation's absolutely excited, uh, head over heels to get Hero Canoe because he's going to be a big part of their future and and turning mm-hmm. around the defense a little bit. So. Uh, for those of you who don't follow him on Twitter, give him a follow at B Collier PPI and you can follow mm-hmm. PPI recruits at PPI recruits. Brandon, mm-hmm. thanks again. Safe travels back to Germany. Thank you guys, man. Go Bucks. Bye bye. This episode of Around the Oval was brought to you by Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. If you've been thinking about refinancing or buying a house, check out our sponsor, Todd Pennington with Revolution Mortgage. They offer low rates for refinancing and home purchase loans, including first-time home buyer programs, down payment assistance, and cash-out home equity loans. Check out revolutionmortgage.com slash tpennington.